grew up in the capital of Sweden. It's a country, as you know, that is known for its innovation skills and also for its gender equality. There is a lot of unicorn companies running around in Stockholm and also we pride ourselves with a really good gender balance and that we score high in different kind of rankings. This is me when I was around six and my first computer. It was a laptop that was really old and I wouldn't say it was even a laptop because the power cord needed to be plugged in at all times, otherwise the battery would die. So therefore I was very committed to keep the focus. I played a lot of Tetris and also drew masterpieces in paint. I would say that this is one of the earliest signs I have for when I started getting in contact with technology for a more amount of time and also where it started. I've always had a big interest in, in science and in technology. So I started young. <laughs> I have always been in, encouraged to pursue whatever I want, to take the risks, go out there, a lot of girl power, and you can do anything. So yeah, I picked and choose and did a lot of hobbies and tested a lot of things out. That is, was until we fast forward and I started high school, applied, and I did the science track in the high school. And um, then suddenly I decided I wanted to pursue computer engineering. And then suddenly, this encouragement disappeared. I had a math teacher that laughed at me when I told her I was going to study computer engineering and said, are you really smart enough to do that? And how will you handle being the only girl in a room full of hundreds of boys? And I, I, like for me, it was really strange that my teacher was laughing at me. So I was keeping it cool and said like, well, I don't know, uh, it, it seems like things are going better and uh, I can do it. And most likely since things are improving after a couple of years, there will be more and more females at my work life. So it shouldn't be a, that big of a problem. But I had this like tiny bell that kept ringing in my head that said, is she right? Can I really do it? Should I maybe apply for something else? But I decided to Google a little bit, found that there was a lot of initiatives trying to improve things. And that from what I could see that the numbers were going up. There was a lot of news articles that said that things were improving and a lot of new things. And there was a lot of interviews with many role models out there. So I applied, I got in. And quickly, seem things didn't seem to add up anymore. When I talked to alumni, they said that, well, 20 years ago, there was more females in the lecture halls, even though the administration said very clearly that this was an all-time high for the number of females in this class. So I was a bit confused, but OK. Then I went on to talk to companies at work fairs and they were very proudly announced that they had 30% females working at their office. But when I started to just ask a few follow-up questions, it turned out that there wasn't a single female working as a computer engineer or computer scientist or programmer. And that, that was a bit confusing. Why did they say that there was 30% females when at least I wouldn't have any female colleagues to work with. So these questions started popping up in my head. Are we getting more women in tech and in IT or not? And uh, I've always had a little bit of trust issues and I've always been curious, so I decided to try to find the truth. <laughs> All of the companies agreed that they had recruiting problems, that these female programmers were out there, that there was 30% of them, they were just not working at any company I talked with. And uh, then I found out after digging in the governmental data that the number was not going up. The percentage of female programmers in Sweden were going down. 
And that was not something that I have ever found until I was in the governmental data and looked to actually see what is actually happening in the numbers. So I came suddenly to see like, okay, but is it just me that thinks that this is off or is it everyone else? So I was standing in a room that looked like this and asked the question that would change my life. I asked, is the percentage of women going up, staying the same or going down of the new woman entering the IT field? And everyone raised their hand and said, yes, of course, it's getting better. I, read, I, I had attended a lecture of Hans Rosling once where he said that if a whole room believes something to be true and that they are basically more stupid than the monkeys at the zoo, they, haven't, they are not guessing, they have been taught wrong. <laughs> and that exactly was happening right before my eyes. So I tested this question again and again to see, is it just them that are wrong with this? And Again and again, the whole room raised their hands and said, yes, things are getting better. So I was like the bus killer <laughs> that when I showed them a slide that said like, no, <laughs> it's not getting better. This is the statistics from Sweden of examiners per year in computer science masters from Sweden. The yellow is the woman and the blue is the man. And as we can very clearly see, we have a spike in the middle here. And this is the dot com crash in the 1999. So since 1999, there hasn't been more, neither females or men that has gotten their examiners. And uh, we can also see that there is a decline both in females and men working and getting their examiners in this field. And this is not something that I heard. And that's because we zoom in and might only get some small part of that last area where you see this tiny, tiny bit of increase. And why is this? Why is it that we see this and then you don't see it? If you Google, for example, more women in tech, you get a lot of it, like a lot. And then you Google less women in tech, and then you basically get no result whatsoever. And that is because when we find that something small is happening in a positive way, we write news articles about it. And then suddenly everyone believes everything is going better. And the next year when things are declining, we just don't write an article. And this is because we have a very strong confirmation bias, especially in Sweden. We want things to improve and we want things to get better. So therefore, we change how we measure. Therefore, I got told 30% women in this workplace. <coughs> I also get asked a lot about why do I care about this? This is, if you look at the whole group of programmers in Sweden, the blue is men and the yellow is women. And as you can clearly see, the amount of men entering the field is much higher than the one leaving it. Therefore, the percentage of women in the field is going down every single year. And the amount of women entering the field is actually lower than the one that are leaving it. So therefore, we have more people in, that are male and less women in compared to the old one. And this creates a big problem because every year things are going slowly and steady a little bit worse. And we don't notice this tiny change that is happening. And why does this matter? Why do I care about programmers as a stereotypical work field instead of everyone else? Right now, we are building the foundation of the digital world. There is so many things that are happening now that will affect us basically forever. We are, first we created the social world, then we created the di designed world, and now the constructed world, and now we are in the digital world. 
And females have had problems in the both social world and the d constructed world for years. First, we needed to fight to the right to vote or the right to work. And then we have problems because things that are not really designed for us. But when we are constructing the digital world, we are building in our biases into the digital world again. And therefore, we will have problems tomorrow that we don't have today. So there is a risk that we are actually moving backwards instead of forward when we are starting to moving things into the digital world. Things can seem a bit off with the constructed world or the digital world. So I will give you an example. My mom and I usually shout in the family car, sometimes to each other, but mostly to the GPS. It cannot hear us. <laughs> and you need to scream very clear so that the GPS will hear you. And sometimes you feel like the GPS is looking at you very cutely, like, yes? And then you ask it something and it's like, yes? <laughs> And why is this? My brother can sit in the back seat and communicate it with it perfectly, but we scream very loudly, like, show us the map. We don't want to be in like special settings menu. And this is because the voice recognition is usually calibrated around a male voice that is lower in pitch, and it removes everything that is too far away from it. So a female with a high pitch that is higher in frequency can get taken as the background noise and just removed. <laughs> and then you scream. <laughs> uh, and then you scream even louder and then it works even less good. <laughs> and uh, this GPS thing, it's like, okay, it's not really a that big of a problem. It's an inconvenient, but it's not a social error. But what happens when people are used to using this technology and think, think it works perfectly? We start putting it in our other areas, like an interview robot. And suddenly it might matter more if the robot can hear you or not. Or, and if the male applicant can get a perfect recording of what he said in the interview, but many of these GPSs can, only can miss up to every fourth word a female say. And if like only 75% of what you're saying is getting to the robot, then a lot of things can be misinterpreted. And this is not science fiction. This fall, there was a person in Sweden that got hired from a robot interview. And it was, of course, a man in middle-aged white man. <laughs> and voice assistants in general are problematic sometimes. Uh, there is an article that is very good that is called I would blush if I could. That was the response of Siri being called a slut back in the days. Since 2017, after the Me Too movement, it started getting a lot of backlash, so they have fixed it now. Uh, so now if you insult it and like really insult it, it might say that you have a bit of a bad language. But it hasn't come to the point that says like this is not okay. The reason we need more diversity is in tech is to stop these kinds of problems before they enter the market. Because the first tests are done by the group that develops them. And if the product is working for them and all the test cases they can come up with, these kinds of errors are put into the real world later. And if you have like a speaking problem or you are not really fitting the box, you get more and more problems because those people are even more underrepresented in this group. And when we talk about representation, I'm not the one we should be putting more into of, because we cannot really get a diverse group with just people that look like me. The female career path through tech and IT field is a leaking pipeline, and it's leaking everywhere. It's not just enough that we get more kids interested by coding, and therefore they apply to more, and then they go through high school with this interest, and then they start a computer science or computer engineering path through university, they enter the field. We must make sure that the few people that are actually going through the pipeline are actually staying there in the end. 
I've chosen to work a lot with this depressing statistics. So I get told that, that this can be quite hard to hear. So I have a one step solution that can solve all of this. So what is it, the steps that everyone can do? Fun. The only thing we must do is trying to create a more fun work field and a workplace for the women working in technology and tech. So what makes a fun workplace? For example, having really good really good workplace is, for example, getting listened to in meetings, getting credit for my work and being able to have really fun after works without being hit on by my colleagues. And a fun workplace is something that you create every single day. We talk equal pay, strategic HR work, clear harassment policies, because this is not something that a one at a one day at a year thing will solve. We must make sure every single day is a little bit more fun for the females. And if we do that, then we might create a work field that they actually recommend their friends to enter and not just stay away from it. <laughs> and understanding that we need to create this will not, of course, fix everything in the industry. But having this mindset of how we try to every day create this new thing will maybe, hopefully, work a little bit better than what we have done so far. Because as you've seen in the previous slides, nothing much has happened in the last 20 years. And that is me trying to put a positive spin on it. Thank you. <laughs>